A cross-section of Lagos residents have expressed worry over the possibility of a second lockdown following the rise in the spread of COVID-19. Plus TV's Mary Chinda reports. Ten months after the first COVID-19 lockdown was imposed on Nigerians, there are fears of a second lockdown with numbers spiking up by the day. On January the 5th, the Nigerian Center for Disease Control, NCDC, announced 1,354 new cases of COVID-19 in Nigeria, totaling 92,705 confirmed cases, 76,396 discharged persons and 1,319 deaths. These figures have put a lot of people in the panic mode. COVID-19 is real. People are still going about their business, people are still going to parties and all that. So people are not, I don't think they are really taking the second wave that seriously. Some say another lockdown would be totally unacceptable despite the rising statistics. Nigeria will not survive for the second lockdown. But we can't really stop, like, we can't start the lockdown again. The lockdown will be bad. Because people have suffered a, a lot in the past lockdown. So it affects so many things. And we can't start that again in 2021. But this respondent thinks another lockdown holds the solution. People's lives are involved here. So I feel if we get to that point where there should be a lockdown, there should be, because we're not really observing social distancing on its own. Just 5th of January, here is the distribution. Lagos has 712 new cases. The FCT has 145 new cases. Kaduna has 54. Rivers, 37. And Enugu, 20. Yet, there are still some who don't believe that COVID-19 is real. I said coronavirus to me is not real. It's not real in Africa, so not only in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. We see countries that uh, have coronavirus, You're killing them in tens of hundreds, thousands. With African countries like South Africa taking the second wave of COVID-19 seriously by imposing a national lockdown and a ban on international flights, health experts have called for strictness in curbing the spread of the virus. Locking down is not going to pay us because poverty is going to kill us more than COVID. We have to be very realistic about our country. My advice as an epidemiologist is simple. Let us strictly enforce the social distancing rules. And this means hand, space, and face. Let people wear the face mask. Irrespective of government's determination to prevent a second wave of COVID-19, experts believe that it may just be inevitable if the attitude of Nigerians does not change. Mary Chinda for Plus TV Africa. Joining us live is Dr. Samuel Takon Ojong, Chairman Planning and Implementation International Human Rights Commission, Nigeria. Good evening to you, Dr. Ojong. Many thanks for joining us. Well, 2020 was characterized with COVID-19 pandemic, with Nigeria not exempted. Uh, let us review our preventive uh, response and management system. Okay, um, um, yeah, very good evening. Yeah. And uh, one of the, what, what I want to say is that um, in respect to the uh, management system, I think to a very large extent is um, um, honestly, it's overflowed. It's overflowed because um, the problem with our people is not just about the pandemic. The problem with our people is about hunger. A lot of people are ready to even die because of the way things are done, you know, and um, so a very like to a very like extent, what um I felt the government should do should have done is um um the the, the, the issue of trust. Because I sincerely want to tell you that um, the citizens have really lost trust and they've lost confidence in what um uh, government is doing, like huddling of um of palliatives and all that. I think that's really caused a lot of um stuff, um a lot of chaos, and which I think um is overstretched, and um, I think it's, it's a mismanagement of some sort, which I think that um, if it's something that can be reviewed or looked into, I think we should be more concerned with our people, with our citizens. So I think it's, 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 it's what I feel. All right, Dr. Takon Ojong. Well, sadly, the world is already battling with the second wave of the virus, if not lockdown. Already with the new measures being rolled out, what should we do differently to prevent the spread? in Nigeria. Okay, okay. One of, one of, like I said earlier, 
um, what our government needs to do, like I said earlier, is that people have really lost confidence. I'm sorry to use that word. I know some might get offended, but they have really lost confidence in government integrity, in government reputations. And uh, one of the things we need to do is to see that our citizen is our focal point of interest. Our citizen is the first thing we should be thinking about, you know, and um, we need to look into that critically. And also, we should try to see that the palliative, you can see what happened lately, and uh, we should try to see that the palliative that is shared is going to the appropriate channels. It is not politicized, it is not merchandised. Uh, with that, I think um, a lot of people have confidence in what, um, what is going on. And they want to they, they want to take it up. It's also happening in other countries internationally. They are they are responsible to their citizens. Our government needs to be responsible to their people because their people determine their state. All right, Dr. Takong Ojong. Now that there is a new strand, now measures have been taken so far by several countries are imposing you know travel restrictions uh, from the UK and other countries. Uh, are we really doing enough uh, to be proactive? Should we also consider uh, locking our borders to international travel? Well, to, to a very large extent, I think um, uh, we might think we might think it's necessary. We might think it's very important, but we should also look at the fact that do we really have what it takes to go on lockdown again? We've really gone through a lot of crises already. We've had a lot of lives died of hunger. So we need to look into that. Our problem basically is not just COVID-19. Our problem is COVID hunger. Mm. Our problem is just hunger. So if, if all those measures is taken care of, I don't think there's a problem for us, for us to go into that. Because at, the, at this point, nobody's believing anybody anymore. It's as if it's overrated. I'm, I'm not saying that no COVID-19, but it looks as if it's overrated. So we have to look at our economy factor. Do we even do what these foreign wars are doing? The European wars are doing, the America is doing, what the Canadians are doing. Do, are we really doing the same thing? Do we really think that when we do when we do all this, nobody will complain? But we've not done anything. So how do we go? Okay, let's take a look uh, casually at the nation's um, public health sector. Do you really think that sector will be the better for REIT going forward, or do you uh, foresee the usual neglect in Nigeria? Well, as a matter of fact, I've really seen the health sector is, is almost looking like a joke. I, I want to really ap uh, apologize if I'm offending anybody. It's almost looking like a joke. But we need to call spade the spade. We need to call spade the spade. If we really think we want to do what we need to do, we have to put a lot of things into consideration. Um, first, we have to say that the level of transparency and sensitivity about whatever we are portraying is made known. It's made known, it's important. And we have to, um, time without that number, we have stressed the, the need for proper healthcare system. But government, it just, it's as if probably a lot of political stuff is going on in between, running whatever they want. And it is, as long as we don't ask someone to hold responsible for mismanagement of office or fund, I do not see any process having a proper structure. We will only continue to patch. There's patching going on. We only continue to patch. So there should be a sector that should be able to man, uh, manage the responsibility of these duties. If that is done, I think whatever is, is in fact, it's an opportunity for us to work on our uh, sectors. Our leaders cannot run out of the country. Anywhere we run to, we are still meeting what we want to meet. So if we are able to define a sector, they'll be able to evaluate and monitor what these people are doing. I think you know, we're not going to have any issue. Everybody will be relaxed. All right. Many thanks, uh, Dr. Samuel Otong, uh, Takon Ojong, for joining us on the news on Plus TV Africa tonight. We do appreciate your input on the second wave of COVID-19 in Nigeria and beyond. Yeah, thank you very much. Sure. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.